It hasn't exactly been the most newsworthy of times for the UK space industry over the past few weeks, with excitement happening elsewhere around the world, from India's Gaganyaan to Starship's IFT-3. But at last, there have been some updates on the progress at Saxavord, Spaceport Sutherland, and with Orbex in general. What's been happening? Well, let's dive in and find out. Welcome to UK Space News, I'm Tom June, and before we go on, if you want to stay up to date with the latest goings on from the UK space industry and beyond, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video. You can also follow me on X and support the channel on Patreon. But now, on to the news. It's been a strange old time as far as Saxavord is concerned. Last year it saw good steady progress, with plenty of fantastic videos and images to really let us dive into what's been done to make the UK's biggest spaceport a reality. Then, at the back end of the year, we had an apparent financial crisis and work ground to a halt, all to be turned around again at the end of the year as they were granted their spaceport operator's license by the Civil Aviation Authority. Since then though, High Impulse decided to postpone their maiden SR-75 launch from Saxavord and moved that to Australia, believing insufficient progress had been made and having doubts that the site would be ready by summer 2024. They still aim to launch by the end of the year and the end of their launch license period however, but the launch in Australia should give them a good indication as to whether the SR-75 will perform as expected and whether it can indeed launch from Saxavord. Rocket Factory Augsburg also announced that they are making changes to their three stage one rocket, with additional engines now being used on the first stage. They're still expecting to be testing at Saxavord come this summer, but as far as them being flight ready goes, with possible changes required to the rocket as a whole, who knows if we'll actually get much more than testing from them. Even still, it would be great to see them up at Saxavord doing their thing, getting ready for when that first launch is going to happen. However, sources stated that Saxavord had received additional private funding and work on Launchpad Fredo would continue in earnest, which it then did with the foundations laid for the launch support tower, and then on the back of Spacecom Expo in Farnborough at the beginning of March and the UK government budget announcement, it was revealed that Saxavord would receive a government grant of £10 million. And that's no small chunk of change there and should, theoretically, allow them to complete Fredo and the integration hangar. Not only that, but out of the blue on social media, Saxavord showcased this composite image. On the left is what looks like the current state of Fredo and the integration hangar, and on the right is an awesome mock-up of RFAs-1 taking flight from the spaceport. So let's dissect what we can, shall we? On the left, we can see that the outer cladding of the rocket hangar appears fully complete, and that launch pad is looking rather clean now, isn't it? That would suggest that groundworks, or specifically underground works, to install the holding tanks and pipework for the deluge system and fuel lines could very well be finished with final concrete installation over the top. If that's the case, I'd be expecting to see topside pipework being installed in the next set of images that we get to link up with what is clearly the start of the launch tower. So yes, I wouldn't be expecting this to take much longer to get fully installed as long as the weather on site holds up. And not only do we have to worry about finances, but as I've previously mentioned before, the weather up at Shetland is a factor too, given how open and exposed it is to the harsh North Sea elements. Given this image also shared by Saxavord showing the inside of the rocket hangar, there is a real worry as to how quickly they're able to move, because the hangar, whilst shelled, is somewhat lacking any kind of concrete floor, and I have to wonder whether the elements have played a part in them being able to lay concrete down. Still, looking at that RFA mock-up, and aside from it being a great glimpse of what our future spaceflight fans hold, it also gives us a glimpse of what the full launch tower will look like. Specifically, note the makeup of the tower with those retractable support arms and that bucket scoop flame diverter underneath. This looks similar to those found at rocket testing sites such as McGregor, Texas, or at the Massey's test site just down from SpaceX's Starbase. I would hazard a guess that this section will be a water-cooled steel plate, which will divert the rocket exhausts out over the sea. 
I've said it before, but if you want to compare this site to anything, then it's got to be Rocket Lab's launch site in New Zealand. Can you imagine the epic drone shots we're going to get as rockets take to the skies and the exhaust plumes cascade out of the water there? Yeah, it's going to look bloody brilliant, and hopefully I'll be there at the heart of the action to bring you all some amazing footage. Speaking of that, I want to give a huge shout out to my amazing Patreon supporters who continue to make these videos happen. It's been a crazy old time full of changes here at my new HQ, and you guys literally helped to keep the channel running, so thank you so very much indeed. And if you want to help support the channel, and in turn, help me to get to Shetland to bring you first-hand incredible footage from the UK's first rocket launches, then head on over to TomJune.com, where you can find links to both my Patreon and my merchandise store, or follow the links in the description below. Remember to leave a little like on this video as it helps me enormously too. Thank you very much indeed. Now, aside from conferences, conferences, and seemingly more endless conferences, in amongst that, Orbex have also been busy little space bees, returning from their winter slumber and back hard at work. First of all, they've received a patent for their coaxial fuel tank design made up of carbon fibre composites. But they've also been continuing to test their engine designs, although in typical Orbex fashion, no footage of that has yet been made available, you bunch of teasers. However, the main bit of excitement has come from Sutherland, where work continues on Scotland's second spaceport. First of all, there was the installation of a new water crossing. Not for people, but for the local wildlife. Aw, you bunch of cute teasers. Yes, as talked about at the end of last year and into this year, Orbex have made design changes to the spaceport to accommodate the local wildlife even more, and this new water crossing will allow critters of all shapes and sizes to safely cross between zones at the site, encouraging natural population movement to continue and opening the area up for all those spaceflight-loving deer out there to marvel in rocketry goodness. But even more exciting than tanks and bridges are gates and roads. The ever-elusive Space Nessie was back on site once again this past week, and he captured these progress pictures, which he shared on X, and has kindly given permission for me to share with you all here. As you can see, the entrance road and car park are starting to properly take shape now, with official-looking spaceport construction signs going up and everything. We know that the main causeway from the entrance to the launch pad is being moved a tad to reduce the overall footprint of the spaceport, but you can just make out that construction of this is now underway too. Now, to temper expectations, if anyone out there is expecting Sutherland to look anything like Saxavord or any other spaceport, then I'm afraid you're very much mistaken. Remember, part of the memorandum of understanding with the local community and wildlife authorities is that the spaceport will blend into the natural environment, as much as a place that flies rockets can. But hence, no massive steel gates yet, nor monolithic construction vehicles. In fact, the cladding of the main office and control room is supposed to be wooden, and with a heather or peat roof, with as minimal an amount of concrete visible across the site as possible. So what we're looking at here is the world's first rustic hipster spaceport. But in any case, it is good to see that progress is continuing up at the site now that the winter weather has started to break way into spring. In case you don't already, please go and give Space Nessie a follow on X and YouTube, and you can find his links below, so please check it out. Consider supporting his ventures too, so that he can continue to bring the world these great images. So, yeah, it might be a smaller update than usual, but a lot of good work continues to be done across the UK space industry, and even the UK Space Agency are on the move, with a new HQ at Harwell Science Campus, next to the likes of Airbus and MDA, as well as regional offices in Wales and Edinburgh, Scotland being opened, bringing them closer to the action. Companies across the UK space sector are also now actively hiring, with Skyrora and Orbex both offering internships, plus lots more openings beyond that. If you're considering a career change and think you fit the bill, then head on over to spacecareers.uk, check out the careers section at ukspace.org, or through the UK Space Agency and company websites directly. That almost sounded like a sponsor thing, didn't it? It's not, 
But if any sponsors are out there and think I'd do a good job and you want to support this channel and promote your thing too, then please do get in touch. We all love shampoo, right? <laughs> anyway, thank you all so very much for watching. I've been Tom June, and I'll catch you next time.